Yeah, and the great Adam Draper. I, I want if you want my attention, e email me that that as the title. That'll that'll get me. Subject great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then next line, Adam Draper. How's how's it going? Yeah. So at first, I want to thank Brett for putting on this great conference, organizing everything. Round of applause to Brett. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Brett. So hi everybody, my name is Daniel Kari. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a firm called Pactum Capital. We are a financial services firm that focuses on blockchain and cryptocurrency. We work with accredited investors, institutions, and cryptocurrency stakeholders. We're very much um, sort of a hand-holding firm. We work directly with clients. We're not like a technology platform. Uh, we have some interesting technology, but um, we're, we're a bit different than most startups in the space where um, we're more of a financial play. And Adam is the managing director of Boost BC. They've invested in all sorts of cryptocurrency, VR, and I believe it's sci-fi company. We call it sci-fi now. Right. So, yeah, and um, you and I have known each other for a long time, so we're yeah. just gonna have a D conversation. Yeah, Dan and I, uh, I think we actually met on a, on a train. Was that where we met? Where did we meet? We first met here in the basement. Was it I here in the basement? Here. And then I, I ran into you on a train. On a we train. had a good talk. We had a good talk. I remember that. It's going to be like this. Yeah. It's gonna be, this talk is going to be like that talk on the train. Yeah. Yeah. And it was good. good. We didn't cover much. Then this will be great. Uh, who, uh, here, I, I just want to gauge it. So who is in the enterprise world of crypto, or not crypto, just enterprise, uh, enterprise world, okay, Corp corporate, uh, at the empire, um, the, uh, who, who's starting a company? That's good. Okay, uh, it was all the corporate people just raised their hand again. They're leaving their jobs. <laughs> they won't tell anybody. The, 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 the uh, uh, and who's investors? Okay, good. Well, that's cool. Uh, that's great. We have some idea of who's in the audience now. I just wanted to now do that know. for us. I wanted to make sure we knew, so I'm glad yeah. you started with that. Yeah. I did want to open up, though, Adam, because I used to be an editor at Coindesk, and I remember, I think it was 2014, you made a pledge to invest in 100... You're we'll calling me out on this? Well, <laughs> wait, why not? No, like, I just want a status update, right? Okay. So, so it was 100... You were going to invest in 100 Bitcoin startups. I was. We'll switch that to blockchain startups. So, yeah. Where so are you at, at that? By the way, at the time when we said we're going to do 100 Bitcoin startups, we were the first Bitcoin fund, and thank you for covering us. You're what, well, no I'm one calling wanted you to, out. I'm calling you out. No but. one wanted to cover us. And we were, uh, we were the first big Bitcoin fund... Uh, and we said, we're going to invest in Bitcoin-related startups. We saw this huge opportunity to help revolutionize finance. Um, and, then, uh, and then I said, uh, we need to make a huge uh, you know, prediction. And so we did. We said, we're going to do 100 Bitcoin startups. And that sounded insane, it right? That, that, like, are you serious? Like, are you three, serious? Yeah, this was three and a half years ago, four years ago? 2014. Yeah, so, 2014. Yeah. Uh, so a while ago. Wow. So four years ago. Almost four years ago. We're aging. We're, we're old men. Yeah, especially in crypto. The, uh, and so what he's calling me out on is where are we on the 100? And where we are is about 95. We're so, at about 95. So why were you mad that I asked? That's I, pretty good. I know. It's pretty good. I'm very close. I, was, I, I, I think I, I wasn't mad. I was just impressed by your memory. <laughs> Thank you. It's one of those things that you don't think, like, you, you announce it, you don't think anyone's going to call you on it, someone calls you on it. The guy uh, that wrote the article is calling you on yeah, it. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, we, we, thank you for writing about us again. No problem. Yeah. You're so we, we, we've, but what was really fun about that entire process was we've been able to watch Bitcoin evolve into more than just Bitcoin. So it was sort of, token. It, it was Bitcoin, and then the Jamie Dimon was like, Bitcoin bad uh blockchain good and then uh everyone everyone's like oh well we can't touch bitcoin but we want to experiment with the blockchain which i have a strong opinion on and then uh and then next was like ethereum released the erc20 smart contract and the reason that anyone is interested in crypto today is really because of ethereum 
um, because of ICOs, because suddenly their friend got like 20x returns in three months and you, you, everyone felt FOMO and started buying. Um, and the ERC20 smart t contract was brilliant because it allowed anyone to fundraise from anywhere in the world uh, for an idea. And that, at its core, is awesome. And that's what the last panel was about. The last panel was really the good and the bad. But really, at the end of the day, like if I have an idea, I want to realize it in the world. And if I can fundraise from people, not just venture capitalists or angel investors, people who like anyone all over, that's exciting. That's a really exciting concept. So I just wanted to plug Ethereum and say th thanks, Vitalik, I guess. But, well, it, it, let's... Oh, and now, now we're on this new trajectory of like, uh, other than the ERC-20 smart contract, they're really like, you, use, this year is scale and usefulness. So like, I would say most of the things that everyone has invested in in the entire market don't really exist and don't really have throughput or velocity of, of money. That's sort of how you would measure the quality of a network. Um, and this year is really about that. Uh, everyone laughs when I bring up CryptoKitties. Do you guys know what CryptoKitties are? Yes. Anybody own any CryptoKitties? You, you sound like we've been, we've been drained. We, people have talked too much about CryptoKitties. Uh, but the, they're very exciting because suddenly you have scarcity on the internet. This thing that is infinite, you can actually create one item on the internet of. So that's really, really exciting. Um, and that, that is the, re like, I think one of the only real great use cases of, of the blockchain. Like, I mean, there, that in itself has a lot of applications. I'm not saying that CryptoKitties is the only one. Um, but I'm a collector. I collected comic books when I was younger. I collected uh, trading cards. I collect, you know, I, I understand collecting inherently, and that's never been possible until to today on the internet. Um, so that's really, really exciting. Yeah, I, I have a whole litter of crypto kitties. I find it so fascinating. You can take two assets and create a hybrid of those two. Yeah, with with tra it's just. It's There's incredible. been nothing like that. I only have one. I have a 17th generation crypto kitty. Oh, so you need to you need to mate them. Okay. That's that's the well. Point. I have to. It's called siring, and you. I have to like farm mine out to find someone because I don't have another one to mate with. I can help you with that. Okay. I've got a bunch of them. <laughs> this is only a weekend. Okay. <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, well, so but we digress. Yeah. I, so there is okay. So let's go back though because. We're talking about Ethereum and CryptoKitties, but Adam, what, what have you learned from those early days in Bitcoin? Like, what, what, what did you learn as an investor and from entrepreneurs about the whole ecosystem in, in Bitcoin and, and where we're at today? Yeah. So first, when we entered the market, we were early. Like, that's what I would say. Like, too early? In a lot of ways, yes. Uh, but you need to go through that. Like, you, you have to go through that to really get to know the network, get to know the people. Um, early Bitcoin was a bunch of idealist anarchists, and like, it was great. Like, the. So I was, I was an early investor in Coinbase, and I met, I met Brian uh, at a coffee shop, and then I did diligence, and I went and I wanted to. Uh, talk to a bunch of other um, crypto people. They weren't called crypto people. I keep saying crypto people like that was what they were called. This is a retroactive branding of them. They were Bitcoin people. Uh, and what I learned was every single person I met while I was doing diligence on the space was the smartest person I'd ever met. So if all the smartest people you've ever met are contrarian and working against a system that exists that where it, like it just is it's not like good or bad it just exists and every single one is dynamic and like excited and building like they're all builders uh you invest like that's that that is where you want to invest you want to invest your time and money in where the smartest brains are working uh and so we did we were very fortunate to have backed people really really early in uh early late 2012 early 2013 and when we've carried them, but there have been winters, like 
I was introduced as the great Adam Draper. I would like 18 months ago, that was not a thing. Uh, no one said the great anything. They were like that weirdo uh, who likes that thing. Is it still a thing, Adam? Is that Bitcoin thing still a is thing? Is it dead yet? Yeah, is it dead yet? And so, uh, like, what I've learned over the last four years is really like, d don't bet against crypto. Like, if you're thinking like we should, yeah, like don't don't do it. Um, it's it only becomes more captivating, and the friction in the space only makes you pulled in more. Um, like, I don't understand these people who are like anti the space. Like, they've been so stubborn that they've decided to completely just disregard an entire like revolution. Uh, and I think that's that's a mistake because whether or not like the world becomes what I am perceiving it to be, this, this tokenization and blockchain of everything, it's a thing. Like, that, that is verifiably, like, a fact to me. And when I traveled to Singapore uh, just a month ago, I was out there helping one of our startups because getting bank accounts for crypto companies is still difficult. Um, I realized that crypto took over the world. This conversation that we're having, that you've probably been to a couple of these things now, who here has been to a crypto event before? I don't know why everyone's not raising their hand, but... Uh, you're at a crypto event. You're at a crypto event. <laughs> now you have... That, I was expecting 100% participation. That was a like, trick question. I got like, I got like medium, like 60, 60%. Blo sorry, oh, blockchain. Oh, I'm not allowed to say... Is this one of those rooms? Uh-oh. Oh, oh, my God. I didn't know that. You didn't tell us, I didn't right? know this was one of those rooms. Okay, first off, like, get over that. Uh, so, everyone. Uh, the token doesn't exist without the blockchain. I'm just going to let you guys know that, and good luck to you all. Um, the But crypto took over the world. Like, I had this conversation, actually, with a lot of, a lot of people who hadn't accepted tokens yet. Um, in, in Singapore, I was talking to the banks, the government, the MAS, the MTI, the, I talked to startups, I talked to everyone. Um, and what I realized was while I was in rooms with non-crypto, like I wasn't set up with meetings, was all anyone wanted to talk about was crypto. Um, and all of them owned. How many people in this room own Bitcoin? Is this one of the, or, okay. Yeah, like more people than have showed up to crypto events own, own crypto. Uh, and that's, that's really exciting. Um, you're starting to see, like, we're just at the browser phase. Like, w w we're at the Netscape Navigator phase of the cryptocurrency world. Uh, we are just onboarding people to the new system. When Brian Armstrong pitched me, he said, at some point, the world is going to be on one financial infrastructure. I believe Bitcoin is that financial infrastructure. I'm going to onboard people to that new world. And like, that's where we are. We're at the point where people are just realizing that you, they can be onboarded. Uh, and that's, that's all Coinbase has done. He's stuck true to that world. He's been the easiest way to get in. Uh, and that's, and he'd be easier, but like regulations, you know? The, yeah, I would say um, my firm, we're institutional traders on GDAX, which is the Coinbase platform. And uh, the GDAX exchange is the best trading exchange for professional traders. My, my co-founder is a professional trader and um, Coinbase, is, they've just, they've been phenomenal for us. Um, their institutional desk, just their service and just the platform. And it, but it's taken, you invested in 2013, right? Yeah. That was five years ago. It was, so. Yeah. It's taken that long, really. It was actually late 2012, so yeah. Okay, over five years then yeah. to, to get, and did you think that they were gonna become an exchange? Or? Uh, so the, like whether or not you call it an exchange, like they were always being- A wallet. Or a broker or a wallet, like they were a wallet. And when, when I met them, I actually sent Brian recently his, uh, his first pitch deck. And it was like, we did $16,000 in volume in the last month and in the last month so like that's like sixteen thousand dollars just transacted like this second on coinbase yeah so like right now like right and that, again there's another and again yeah. and like that that was in a month and so like that was 
that's pretty crazy growth. And when you're in the weeds as a startup, like you don't necessarily see that progress you've made. And that's why I sent him his old pitch deck because it was pretty hilarious. Um, do you have any, how much time do we have? Do I get to just keep going? You just get to keep going. Well, the- I think we should take a couple of questions. I bet, I bet they have questions. Is it time? This group looks like they have like very like questions. Somebody's got a question. Like sure. like like convince me. That's what this audience says to me. Like, pitch convince- your ICO. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, pit- you can also do that. There you go. He wants to pitch his ICO. See, that's that's. At least I got you to raise your hand, sir. That's that's all. So uh, one thing that I struggle with as a potential investor is if I invest in a company, I, I get a claim, right? If I'm buying equity, I'm getting stock. If I'm doing debt, you know, I have an even higher claim on assets. And the thing that I struggle with is with an ICO, you're providing value to the company. How do I decouple that value? Because typically, when you get involved in an ICO, the contract tends to be quite specific. You don't have a claim on assets. And I'm wondering, how do you see that evolving over the future? So right now, it's sort of debt, different series of equity, and then, you know, maybe anybody else. Is ICOs, are ICOs going to become a, a component in that ladder from a regulatory environment as we move forward? Or are you just out of luck? if the company goes under, for example, that you've invested as part of an ICO mechanism? So it's a great question, first. Uh, The first thing that everyone needs to wrap their head around, and this is the most difficult thing for me to wrap my head around, is these are not companies. There's no CEO of Bitcoin. There's, there, there's no CEO of Ethereum. People look at Vitalik as the leader, but there's no CEO. Um, so w- when you're talking about if the company goes to shit uh, and uh, what do I get, um, th- there isn't someone you get to punish. It's a network. But there are companies that ICO. There are companies that ICO, in which case you, if you're... Okay. Okay, in the... The, the, there's a discrepancy of like, what does it represent? Does your token represent equity? If it represents equity, you have a, it's equity. Like there's the tokenization of equity that's going on right now, which is really exciting. But if it is a part of a network, that network does not actually have a, a CEO. And it, but we have companies who have ICO'd and they own a piece of the network. So normally you need to figure out what the breakdown is of that token sale and how much of the actual tokens are owned by that company. And if that company goes under and still owns tokens, then technically you have a right to those tokens. Yes, because they are in control of those tokens. But in general, uh, I think the thing that you're actually itching at is not that problem. It's a fundamental shift in how governance works inside of an organization. So it's no longer a centralized system. This is a decentralized, centralized question. So in a decentralized system, we don't know what it looks like yet. Like, I don't think we know what good is. I don't think we know what bad is other than scams. Like, we know scams are bad, but everything above that, we, don't, we everything's flat in our purview. It's all the exact same to us. And I think that there are going to be different use cases for tokens. There are going to be different uh, sectors of tokens. And we we don't know what those are yet. Like, is insurance tech going to have a full token system itself? And then we value that token system different than the, like, financial token set. Um, So it's it's a very, like, loaded question, more because it's a... Are you comfortable in this new world of no answers? So, good question. It's a great uh, question. Does, yes, good. We have questions now. Look at this. Hey, Adam, about uh, 15 minutes ago, you said something that I thought was going to be a Mark Andreessen statement of like software is eating the world. Uh-huh. Uh huh. When you said you don't have the token 
without the block blockchain, right? Uh huh. I thought you were going to reverse it and say you don't have the blockchain without the token. So can you expound on that a little bit for us with regards to the blockchain and whether or not you believe for us folks on the enterprise side, yeah, if so we need to be looking at the token as a as a as a, a core component of the blockchain. I appreciate the question. So I think. Everyone, I think one of the things that enterprise-based blockchains have done is gotten huge companies to, one, innovate, two, communicate with one another. I think both of those things, hugely valuable. Like, hugely, hugely valuable. Uh, what I meant by my comment is that all a blockchain is is a repository of all the transactions that have ever happened. And you can store different types of things in there. But... The magic of Bitcoin or the magic of Ethereum is incentivization. Like without the cryptocurrency, you aren't incentivizing anyone to actually work on it. So Bitcoin is, people say like, what's it backed by? What it's actually backed by is the work that hundreds of thousands of computers are doing in order to solve an algorithm faster than one another. And once they've, and they're checking each other's work while they're doing that. And then they log a system in the blockchain, and those computers are rewarded with a Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin wouldn't work without an incentive structure. Otherwise, it just ends up being a really slow database. And that's, that isn't as good as a MySQL database. It's a centralized system that is owned and controlled by a big like, organization, which is... Which is fine. Like, I don't think everything should... I'm not one of the people who's like, decentralize everything. I, I don't think everything should, but it's just going to... If it slows things down, like, I, I don't think it should be. If you have a private immutable ledger, it's not as powerful as if you have an open immutable ledger. Um, and at the end of the day, like, if it's a private immutable ledger, it's mutable because you control it. Like, that makes it changeable. So I, that's what I mean. The incent you need to incentivize people to keep the system online. Otherwise, it's centralized and it isn't as powerful. Um, there might be a way, and this is what the big argument is against, like the center, like the fully open system, is like, yeah, if all the banks got together and decided to agree on something like that has ever happened in the, the history of the world. Um, and they all decided they equally mined the system. Uh, there might be a way in which you distribute the power to a federated, like it's a, it's not federated, but it's like there are powerful nodes and then there's like smaller nodes that don't have as big a vote. Um, and then I think the only argument against Bitcoin, by the way, and or is, okay, is Bitcoin and Ethereum the Napster and we're gonna see an iTunes. Like, I think that's the only argument. And it's about whether or not people actually trust the system or not. I think people, less and less people over the last 10 years trust the system. That's my, that's my inherent bet. Like that by backing this crypto space over the last five years. Um, the, the, and and I, I believe in people. Like, like do I think more people should have the power over their money? Like that's the argument of the, this. And I believe that globally that should be a unanimous yes. Like everyone should be in control of their own money. And people are like, well, I am in control of my own money. Really the bank leases you the, the money. Like Cyprus is perfect proof of that. That could happen anywhere in the world. Where four year, three years ago, when was that? That was 2013, and that's yeah. what caused the rise in, in Bitcoin in, uh, that was April of 2013, April when it went to $266, was, which, has got me, which is what got me into the industry, actually, was the whole Cypress thing. And then I said, if, it go, if Bitcoin goes over 100, I'm jumping in this industry. So that's why I remember it so, yeah. so clearly. Yeah. Vibin. I haven't brought up Cypress in a while. So Cypress, basically, they shut down, they went broke, right, the entire country or the government, and they shut down everyone's bank account, took 40% of everyone's money, just took it, and to pay off their debts. That was it. Like, that, isn't, that shouldn't be how the system works. Like, the citizens shouldn't be penalized because the government's not working. Um, so that, that is what really we've been fighting for. We're fighting for freedom. We're not, 
it's not like this anarchist, like we're in this new age of crypto that's not like anarchists bring down the system. We just want better services. Like I, I think banks don't deliver a good service. I don't know if any of you are banks, but you don't deliver a good service. <laughs> That's like, what it is. That's what it is. From a guy who runs a fintech incubator program, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Not to cut you off, we got one more question. One more, we got question. One more question. Take a break. Great question. Thanks. So, in the context of investing, um, when you're looking at the crypto economics of a specific ecosystem, uh, what do you look for? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I do what I, I do, and it's exactly the same job I've been doing, which is, that was like a really odd statement to make. Um, I invest in people. Like, I invest in, d does this person have the capability to do what they say they're gonna do? Are they solving a large enough problem? And are they gonna change the world? And do I wanna live in that world? And if the answer to all of those questions is yes, take all of my money. Like, that is basically what my decision is. So if you're looking at these things based off of, like, n just the number, like, numbers of volume, number of price, number of, like, don't. Like, do not do that. Meet the people. Show up to the meetups. Figure out where the excitement is, the ferocity is. Figure out what they're trying to change about the world. Um, because that... Like, if you're looking at the markets being like, hey, it went up 20% today. Like, everything goes up 20% when Bitcoin goes up 20%. Like, don't, like, don't, don't follow the market. Don't th think that, yes, it's great. If you, if you, if it's gambling right now on the market. Um, <laughs> if, if SEC doesn't want me saying that, or the market doesn't want me saying that. But like, it's that, true though, it's true. So. It's fully true. It, but if you're taking a long-term purview on, if you're taking a viewpoint that's five years, 10 years out, that, that is a good investment. Basically, any of the top 10 are good investments. Like, if you're thinking this network effect, this is, going to, this is the world I want to live in. I want to live in this world of this crypto token. That is worthy. Um, there are a lot of things that are going to happen. In it. Like, everyone's get, everyone always asks me, like, future, like, prediction questions and, like, what's going to happen? And it's, I, I've been wrong every year about crypto. I'm right on the macro. I'm wrong on the micro. Things change. Things hit you. Like, I didn't see Ethereum coming. Anyone who said they thought uh, they saw Ethereum coming. Like, I could back that up. I actually sent him a company in, like, when I worked here about three years ago. And he was like, I'm not investing in the theory. Like, we're, I, I didn't I was like, it. Bitcoin. I was like, Bitcoin actually, maximalist. Yeah, if I had a question, which we got to go, we got to cut this one off. Yeah. Been like, when did you buy into it? But let's have an offline conversation about that. <laughs> yeah, so we are out of time. I, there are other panels, so this has been really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Adam's been going off here. Sorry. But, um, no, no, it's a lot uh, of fun. It, we'll, we'll be around, so, so we'll if you want to chat. We'll Adam back in the summer for a Silicon Valley event. We'll get him an hour instead of Yeah, we need to give so. you an hour, man. <laughs> we need, you need 60 minutes. I'm so long-winded. <laughs> you have the lungs. Excellent, guys. So we're going to take right. a 20 minute break and then we'll meet right back in here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Adam, can I, can I ask a favor? High five.